YouTube balls it going. The Goat House is back. We are officially into week two of the NFL season. I got my week two power rankings here today. We'll update these every single Tuesday. Uh, and these are based on what teams are doing in season, You know how they performed the previous week, if they're winning, if they're losing. A lot of people do them differently. They do them kind of end of the year playoff predictions who are the best teams they're weekly updated power rankings so i'm going to treat them as such that's how i always do them so if you guys understand and enjoy the video here we have picks leagues going on a lot of prizes there's ways for you guys to get your picks in the videos more info uh in that link that's pinned in the comments some sick prizes as well and there's a giveaway with those prizes from the gld shop they have chains nfl pendants made from real gold i'm wearing the buffalo bills helmet right now um so sick stuff i have a code goat for 33 percent off makes it very affordable uh you know way more than you would think for some real stuff there so there's a link down below for their site and the giveaway the league all that uh and make sure you use that code goat uh make sure you follow us on twitter a lot of important things going on there and super followers getting loads of bonus content more to come as well uh, and then, yeah, here we got the giveaway and we got the prizes from GLD. You see Aaron Jones and Micah Parsons, Tyree Kill as well. They rock their stuff. I'm rocking it too, but those guys are a little more important. So, uh, yes, cool stuff. Links down below. Check it out. Power rankings. I'm blocking the Jets the movement. They moved down four spots now, which is pretty tough. And they're, they're at 32. And it's mainly because uh, what happened to the teams down here. You know, you got teams like the Seahawks who won and were pretty impressive. Uh, you had a team like the Texans who tied. You had a team like the Bears who won. You had a team like the Giants who had an impressive win against the Titans there. Uh, you know, So that kind of forced the Jets to go down. So that's the mistake people make with the power rankings I see in the comments in the past. Is like, you know, was that team deserving of moving down that far? It's really not always about that team or one other team. It's kind of what's going around around them. You know, so a lot of those other teams that were in this range moved up. So the Jets end up going down. I They did a pretty good job stopping. The, the impressive part is they stopped the Ravens run, which is very difficult to do. The defense played solid for most of that game. Pass defense can be a little bit better because uh, the Ravens started figuring things out. But there's some promise with the defense. The offense just really has to get things going. I mean, Flacco threw the ball 50 times. Um, they were kind of productive on offense, but you can't, they couldn't find ways to even keep it close or get points. And that's, that's a little alarming. You know, that's a little concerning there. So it's only one week, but Jets will be at 32, a very winnable game against the Browns. We'll talk about it more in our weekly picks and score predictions. Um, that's an interesting matchup. I think that that game is actually one that can go either way. Um, people may disagree, but 31, the Texans are going to stay put at 31. They tied. They actually looked pretty impressive. They, they outplayed the Colts for most of this game. Um, you know, they just could not hang on. And it is a little concerning when you can't pull those games off or the things weren't going the Colts' way. You know, they're dropping touchdowns. And, um, you know, you got to be able to close those ones out because how many games are you going to be, to be able to close out if you cannot close out that one? You know, because they're not always going to be in games. So that's tough. You know, and it was tough that some of the other teams around this range won. So it was kind of hard. I thought maybe the Texans could move up because they played all right, but a lot of some of these other teams won, uh, and the teams that lost were coming from a little higher. I didn't think they were deserving of being 31, so the Texans stay put at 31. Um, Falcons at 30, it's tough because they, they kind of like the Texans, you know, for like three quarters, they played a pretty good game against a good team in the New Orleans Saints. It's just really like how, that's an ultimate game. Like where how could you not find a way to win that game if you cannot close that game out? We got problems. We got problems. So, yeah, one side, they played, the, even though they lost, which is the more important thing, which isn't good, um, even though they lost, they, they played all right against a good team. But it's like, man, if you can't close that out, I don't have a whole lot of trust in you. Uh, but they have they had good moments on offense. Cordero Patterson had a good day. Defensively, they surprisingly had more pass rush than we would expect it. I wouldn't, it'd be unrealistic to keep expecting crazy pass rush outings from the Atlanta Falcons. Um Maybe turn some of those field goals into touchdowns and you win games. Don't fumble in the red zone. It's just if you can't close that game out, it's it's not really a great look. So the Falcons go down four spots, but it's not like you're not going to be getting a free win when you're playing the Falcons. That's the good thing about them. Like they're going to put up a fight. Lions are going to go down two spots. I like the offense from them. Um, so that was kind of the bright spot. Couldn't move them down too, too much. Uh, even though they lost and some other teams around this range won because I like their other defense. I don't like though. The defense would be a reason we're like, ah, I kind of want to move them down even more because the defense was pretty brutal in that game. 
Uh, but I like the way they fought back. The offense was pretty explosive, you know, especially DeAndre Swift. Um, Lions start the year at a loss, but uh, they're twenty only down two spots. They're at 29. 28 is going to be the Jags down three spots. A winnable game from the Jags. Uh, they moved the ball pretty well. That's the positive there. They moved the ball well, made some plays on defense, but they couldn't find a way to win. They couldn't find a way to execute in the red zone, put points up on the board. It was a very winnable game, and you couldn't close it out. So um, is it one of those games where it's like, man, if you can't close that out, how many are you going to? There's a, there's a lot of those teams. I think some more so than the other. Others, the Falcons one was worse than the Jags one. Like the Falcons can't close that out. Man, maybe the Texans too, even though the Texans didn't lose. Uh, but the Jags, they got some talent. You know, they're, they're going to put up a fight with you. They're going to they're gonna move the ball on you offensively. Just got to figure out ways to get points up on the board and close that out. They're down three spots. Uh, the Bears were the Bears with an impressive win. Well, not, I don't know if it's that impressive, but a win over the 49ers. That part's impressive. Beating the 49ers, a team that's supposed to be a lot better than you. Um, so that's a good good way to start. Uh, defense somewhat impressed in that game. Um, I was originally moving the Bears up more, but a big factor in this is well what's going around with the teams around them you know the Seahawks winning in a pretty damn good game last night factored in obviously but yeah the more I thought about it with that Bears Niners game it was pretty much more of whoever played worse was going to lose it wasn't like who showed up who dominated who who did this extremely well was going to win it was more so it was a sloppy it was sloppy condition so that could play a part but um, yeah so I don't know if the Bears did anything that great that stood out to me uh that besides beating the 49ers and they played some solid defense um you know and that is why they're moving up obviously but uh just two spots up to 27 patriots to go down three spots we we're seeing the patriots in the the, the uh, last eight uh, tier here uh but uh, a poor outing there you know especially offensively couldn't really get much going do not like the game plan do not like the play calling um, and they were trying to, they were, they were act, they were playing from behind. I understand that, but they were acting like they were playing from like 30 behind. Um, don't love that, uh, defensively. I mean, the Dolphins only scored 20, but there was some sloppy moments there. It was a sloppy outing. It's a tough matchup. You know, the, the Dolphins have a, the Dolphins, I think are the better team in general, you know, in the past and the Patriots have been better, but the matchup's been weird with the Dolphins just out, just have more than them in terms of the matchup. But I think kind of got both of those going now. So it was tough. Um, you know, could be better against different teams here. We'll see other them against the Steelers, which is a winnable game for either side. Uh, and the Seahawks go up a whopping seven spots uh, because they beat a good team like the Broncos. But what they put out in the field, which is a big part of my power rankings, was pre some pretty good stuff there. I thought they played very well offensively. Surprised me. Uh, you know, the offensive line surprised me, but Geno Smith surprised me the way. You know, not that he was, you know, making passes, completing the ball. I mean, he went a while without in an incompletion. He only had one for a stretch there. Um, not only that, but how he stepped up past, and there wasn't a whole lot of pressure, but how he stepped stepped up past the pressure. Sometimes pressure could be blocked, be being blocked as well, kind of kind of a collapsed pocket. He steps past it, makes a throw, kind of makes correct reads. Uh, Rashad Penny ran very well. Weapons played for the most part played well defensively. They. They, they, you know, they made some stops. They made some key stops. Guys were flying around the football field. That's what that's what I love. They they did have a little luck, or should I say, hack it on their side in, in that game. Um, but what they presented on the field was good enough to win because you know they put some good things out on the field on tape there. So Seahawks, I thought, were deserving of moving up a a good amount there with the seven spots. And it was not just because they beat a good team in the Broncos. It was supposed to be a good team, but because, again, what I said, what they presented to us on the field, which plays a huge part for me. Uh, the Giants going to go up six spots. So it's a pretty good pretty good movement, too. They beat a pretty good team in the Tennessee Titans, and they pr put some pretty good things on the field that you feel pretty good about. Like, they can... They can slow teams with their defense. They adjusted and figured that out. But the main thing is, they, are they a dominant running team? Like, they presented something dominant out there, which was fantastic. I mean, the Titans obviously can't, maybe not as good as last year for some reason, but with a number one run defense last year, by a good amount, only averaged 83 yards against them. And, and the Giants lead the NFL in rushing right now. It's only one game, but that's what they went out there and did. They found a way to win. And to do it while trying to come back is, you know, I don't, people realize how, how don't people don't realize how extremely difficult that is. You don't want to run the clock, but you want to run the ball. And they found a way to do it. They found a way to clutch up there. Maybe they had a little bit of luck on their side at the end there with uh, some bad coaching decisions with the Tennessee Titans and a 47 miss, 47 yarder missed. But um, I, what they showed us 
pretty pretty impressive stuff. Now, am I expecting it? Let's, that's the thing with a lot of these teams, too. I'm not predicting or assuming things going forward with these power rankings. We just have the teams will have to show us. Time will tell, and that'll affect the ranking in, in the power rankings. So we'll see. Uh, these two teams will actually play each other. I like when that happens. 23 versus 24. Panthers, uh, tricky one, you know, with the movement because I what I don't like is they got dominated on the ground. Like you can run all over the Panthers, it looks like, and they the Giants just dominated on the ground against the Tennessee Titans. So that's interesting. Um, and they just got dominated with the time of possession. So that kind of makes you want to move them down more. They still had a very good chance to win the game. They were a little unfortunate at the end of roughing the passer, a 60 yard field goal, clutch 60 yard field goal. Obviously you can't blame it all on that. You got to stop the run better. You got to hold the ball a little bit longer. You got to start off a little stronger, but you know, for the fact that they got dominated, really dominated early in this game and with the time of possession on the ground, that they, they had a realistic shot to win the game because how they played in the second half, how they fought back, uh, kind of stuck with me a little bit. So, And I think that's some promise moving forward, perhaps. We'll see. But I didn't want to move them down too much because there maybe if you can find some positives in a loss, I think they were there, perhaps. Uh, Cardinals go down four spots at 22. They did play a tough team in the Chiefs. So that matters who you play, but they looked really bad. They looked it was brutal out there on both sides of the ball. I mean, especially offensively. Like this is an offense that you expect to be no matter the time of the year, it should be explosive. It should be good. And you play a Chiefs defense who maybe is better than we think, but it's not the best defense and you can't do anything. And then you factor in how tough the Cardinals usually are early in the year. They couldn't do anything. There was zero adjustments at the line. They did not look prepared at all. Um just had to keep punting the ball away and the defense were constantly on the field and that's very tough to play defense when on the field but they just couldn't stop anything I, I mean the Chiefs could have had whatever they wanted in that game so um, a brutal outing it was the Chiefs so I mean as brutal as it was you'd think maybe move down more but yeah I guess it was the Chiefs but uh, they're gonna go down four spots at 22 uh, there hopefully that was just a week one thing for the Cardinals because that was not it's a team that we think should be fighting for the playoffs at least at least you know, and, and so hopefully they figure things out there. 21, the Browns are going to go up three spots. Uh, they get a win, a clutch win. Uh, they they dominate time of possession. They dominate on the ground. Those are the positives, so they're up three spots. The, the one thing, the bad thing is, like, if you dominate that hard, you know, that much on the, with the time of possession, which is that, that style offense's main goal, uh, and you barely squeak by, I, it's not a great sign. That's not really going forward. I mean, it's week one, get out there with a win. They did that, and that's why they're going up three spots. But it's just kind of something to monitor going forward. Like uh, That's kind of their perfect game in a way like the you know without Deshaun Watson especially you know um, and, and they barely squeaked by so they're gonna have to do they're gonna have to do a little bit better j job closing it out uh, you know uh, for sure moving forward Def I like their defense uh, they got to do a little better cl better job closing it out as well but they're gonna go up three spots there to 21 20 is gonna be the Cowboys they go, they go down three spots now you could make an assumption or a prediction now the Cowboys without Dak they're gonna be worse than this and I would agree with that assumption or prediction, but again, that's an assumption or a prediction. Uh, we're not doing that with the power rankings. Um, you know, so right now I have them moving down three spots. It's going to be a tough task without Dak. And again, you could, uh, a logical prediction would that they would be continuing to move down, but we'll wait and see. But, um, yeah, if you're basing it just on their offense, you would think, you know, if offensive power rankings, they plummet, you know, understandable. Um, defense, they had a pretty good outing. You know, the game was kind of close for the most part because they were holding the Bucks to field goals. They just couldn't get anything going offensively. It was a very tough matchup for the Cowboys. I didn't expect a lot from them in that matchup. Just a very tough matchup and a tough team in the, in the Buccaneers. Um, so down three spots uh, will be tough to hold even that without Dak, but we'll see. 19, the 49ers go down four spots. A tough uh, lost against the Bears there, just couldn't really get anything going, which is unfortunate. Defense did all right. And just, again, that, that game felt like whoever was going to play worse was going to lose that game. That That's kind of one of those games. Uh, and the 49ers end up playing worse. So they're going to go down four spots. You know, obviously we still view them as uh, they're supposed to be a pretty solid team. The quarterback play's got to be better. They got to get healthy as well. That's a tough part. Um, it, it was weird because they, they they felt like a team that were was deserving of moving down a lot more than four. Like in my head before they're doing these power rankings, I'm thinking 49ers might be one of the biggest fallers. But once you actually go in and do them, you know, because what you know how they're ranked previously plays a big part too. Like could you really move them down below the Cowboys? You know, could you really move the Browns up more than three spots? And the Cardinals look terrible. The Panthers lost. You know, the Patriots lost, moved down to that last year. So the 49ers kind of got some help. 
uh, to stop them from moving down more than four spots. So that's something to pay attention to is what's going on around them because some people would just look at one team and decide to complain. Uh, 18, the Titans, one of the biggest fallers. They're going to go down six spots. A loss to the Giants, which they had that game. They were up 13, and they, and they had it in the end, too. Some questionable decisions there. But, um, yeah, that they outplayed the Giants for at least half this game, and they just couldn't find a way to close it out, which is a little unfortunate there. Um, you know, weird to see that run defense struggle as much as it did. Uh, I don't think Harold Landry was a, that big of a factor in, in the run defense, obviously, in the pass defense. But So that, that was weird. Uh, to see and they maybe have they have Autry playing a little bit more off the edge in Landry's absence so that kind of takes him away from the interior a little bit more maybe that's it it's hard to believe that that one tweak is a that big of a factor so maybe it's just a week one thing it's a very disappointing outing I'm very disappointed in the, the coaching staff um, Vrabel and Downing I mean a brutal game from those guys um, you know so they're gonna go down six spots we'll see um, they got hit pretty hard in week one last year so maybe just a week one thing we'll have to wait and see uh, Steelers are going to go up three spots. They get a win against the division rivals Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. That's pretty good. Um, you know, a very good defensive outing created that many turnovers against Joe Burrow. That's pretty good. The tough part is, you know, they created that many turnovers. Like those things kind of went your way and you created it, but everything, you know, something that's not going to happen every game, especially when you play the Bengals, it's just not going to continue to happen. Uh, those, so everything kind of went your way there and you still just squeaked by. So that's a little tough. Uh, offense really let us down as well. Um, so you know they win, they upset the Bengals. They do have a very good, they have a very good defensive outing. That's why they go up three spots. It's hard to move them up even more than that though, because was it that impressive of, of a win? Because that's one they should really dominate if if um, if you have that many turnovers. You know, and they were a little fortunate to squeak by that one, but they're up three spots because they get a good win there. Sixteen, the Broncos are the biggest fallers this week. Uh, after last night's loss to the Seattle Seahawks, a game that it's week one, but a game that you should absolutely win just because the talent difference on the teams, the quarterback play di difference of what it's supposed to be, what, what the quarterback difference is supposed to be. I don't know if we saw that last night. Um, and just brutal coaching from the Denver Broncos there. Uh, first half, the tackling was rough. Uh, I think they cleaned it up in the second half. I think there was a lot of rust from the players, rust. That is, you know, some sloppy play. I think that's kind of just week one things. We we think that's kind of an assumption for the Broncos. Can they clean that up? You know, the fumbles. I don't expect Javante Williams to fumble the one yard line. I guess Melvin Gordon on the other hand, I can't say I expect it because he's done it his whole career. But some sloppy things here and there. Um, I think will be cleaned up. It just seems that we see it a lot, not a lot, but sometimes in week one. But the coaching, on the other hand, that's something that you know. We don't really see change a whole lot. Like, it's rare, actually. So, that's something that's a little concerning because it was pretty brutal last night. And the Seahawks, um, you know, for not all of this game, but from a chunk of it, outplayed them, which it also shouldn't be the case either. So, uh, that's a that's a very tough loss for the Broncos, and that is why they are moving down eight spots. And they very well – it very well could be a week one thing, especially for those players. Um, very well. And, and they can – Go back to being what we thought maybe they could be and start winning, and then they'll go back up. So that's just how it goes. Uh, 15, the Commanders up seven spots. I didn't really expect to have the Commanders to go up seven spots. I knew they were going to go up a bit. Seven's a lot. Um, a big reason is, number one reason is, yeah, what's kind of going on around them? The Broncos had to drop down pretty far. The Titans, the Niners, uh, the Cowboys, the Cardinals, all those teams just had the Panthers. All those teams had to drop down. And the Commanders got a good win. You know, there's no reason for the Steelers to go ahead of them. There's no re reason for the Browns, teams like that. So that really helped them. A good example of what's going on around a team uh, is, a, is a big reason why the, the movement is the way it is. Uh, it helped them go up seven spots. But another reason is uh, I liked what the Commanders did. You know, the more I thought about it, um, you know, what they did, the more I liked it. You know, they had some sloppy turnovers. I didn't like that the Jags were able to move the ball uh, as well as they did. And the Commanders clutched up in the red zone. I know some of it was the Jaguars shooting themselves in the foot. But uh, the Commanders, how they produced offensively and clutched and the clutch, the clutchness, how they clutched up on both sides of the ball, like I said, the defense red zone, uh, and bounced back from turnovers and using all those weapons they have. The weapons stood out even more than I thought they would. Um, you know, in the passing game, you know, so everything looked good and to be able to go close out a game like that, it felt, it, it kind of leaves you with a little comfortable of a feeling there. So I, I like what the commanders did. Um, it was a losable game. It was a losable game there. It, it quite possibly could have lost that game, but, um, they figured it out. So they're going to go up seven spots. They're at 15. 
Raiders go down four spots. Uh, sloppy outing there, especially from Derek Carr. The offensive line not doing any favors. Is that going to be a thing the rest of the year? Offensive line, I'd say probably. Carr throwing three interceptions, I'd say probably not. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, was, they were in this game, though, which was weird. I mean, I know they were kind of scoring late, but um, it kind of felt like it had the makings of the Chargers really pulling away. So I guess the Raiders kind of – Held on a little bit there, but they can't play that. So at the end of the day, they played a little sloppy. So they're going to move down four spots there um, to number 14. 13, the Dolphins go up six spots. Uh, a game they should win. Like, right, we expect them to beat the Patriots, expect them to take care of business. They did that. Uh, a lot of teams around, kind of like the Commanders, a lot of teams around the range, you know, the Broncos, Titans, Niners, Cowboys, Cardinals, they all lost. Didn't look good. They moved down, so that helps the Dolphins move up. But a pretty good outing from the Dolphins, an elite outing on defense. Um, Love that defense. Offensively, they, they did their job. They did enough. Uh, the two the receiver duo stood out. Um, they were made one-dimensional, um, so how can the running game improve? That's kind of what we're looking, forward going, looking to going forward. 12, the Colts. The Colts tied. They didn't lose, but didn't really feel great about what they put out there. Uh, I like to come back like what they did at the end there. They still ran the ball well. Michael Pittman was solid, uh, but they're going to move down one spot. Really, the receiver play outside Michael Pittman was their main problem. Matt Ryan was trying to make some tight window throws, even though there was no separation. It was like a little separation, and um, you know, and they were either defended, it's just a good play, or there was a drop. We had two drop touchdowns. So receiver thing's an issue. The receiver situation's an issue. Um, they got to play better, you know, against especially the team like the Texans. But they did tie, so it's not the end of the world. And I liked, uh, you know, what they did at the end of that game. They just didn't really look like. I don't know if they look like even a top 12 team, but it's just hard to move them down further in this. Uh, 11, the Bengals are going to go down six spots. It's a tough one because I guess if you can find a positive, uh, and it would be kind of an assumption, but if you can find a positive, it's like, all right, we're probably not going to turn the ball. We're probably not going to be that sloppy every week, and we still almost won even though we were that sloppy. Almost is the key, though, uh, that that sloppy. So we should be all right going forward, and, and I like that statement. I'm not really worried about the Bengals going forward. It's something that I'm going to keep an eye on, obviously. Like, are they going to turn the ball over all of a sudden? Because it's, now it's in the back of our minds. But, yeah, that's kind of an assumption going forward. But based off that game, I mean, they, they, dom- they dominate the time of possession. They have so many opportunities to win the game, and they cannot find a way to win the game. Game and they played that sl- and it's because of the turnovers but they played that sloppy you know put all that together you got to move down quite a bit for that performance obviously so they're going to go down six spots one of the biggest fallers uh, on the day but again it's it's realistic to be confident with them going forward we'll just have to wait and see uh number 10 the saints will go up three spots here uh maybe not the most impressive game as a whole from them because they were outplayed for majority of the game by the atlanta falcons a team you think they should be able to handle but uh, very impressive at the, at the end and that comeback and just finding a way to win so i do like that and you kind of do get the feeling that maybe they're showing us something that what's to come here moving forward maybe they kind of knocked the rust off a little bit another thing we'll have to wait and see on but i like how they ended the thing uh, Winston getting going, getting Michael Thomas going, things like that. Wish they'd give Kamara the ball a little bit more, but apparently there was a minor injury in there, so I guess that would explain that. Uh, so yeah, they they cut it pretty close. They were they were kind of fortunate to pull it off, but I liked how they pulled it off, pulled it up, pulled it off, and they're going to go up three spots to number ten there. Um, number nine, we're going to go to Philadelphia Eagles up five spots. Love the offensive outing; they dominated on offense. They controlled most of this game. The ending score showed it being a little close. Pretty close, three points. I, I think if you just looked at the score, maybe a little, a little misleading, not super misleading, uh, because they controlled most of this game, but they did, they did struggle on defense, especially on the run, de- run defense, which was surprising. So that did factor in. Did I feel like they were in that top tier eight teams playing the Lions, giving up thirty five points, even though they controlled most of the game? I don't really know. You know, I was, you know, the defense scared me a little bit. I, I, it should be much better in the future, but again, another assumption. But offense really impressed. There, the Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown connection starting off strong. So they're up five, which is one of the bigger risers, uh, to number nine. Uh, and then number eight to me, the Packers. Uh, tough one here because the Packers, you may think, are deserving of moving down more than two because they did get outplayed by a bit uh, against the Vikings, their rival, um, and they only scored seven points against. Um, you know, it's just tough to move them down even further. I did think it was a bad matchup for them in week one. I expected the Vikings to win. I, I didn't think it was going to be in that fashion I guess I thought the Packers would score more than seven which if you watch the game it could have been a lot closer they missed out on some opportunities there um you know it very easily could have been a lot closer and they dropped a touchdown right away you know um but 
Yeah, it was. It, I didn't expect them to win that game. It was a tough matchup, um, you know. So it's it's not like we can kill them in in these power rankings, you know. So I moved them down two spots. I, I didn't think. I didn't really think anyone else was like you know felt like a top eight team right now. But another win or another you know Packers loss move them down. Move the teams that are you know streaking's the big thing with the power rankings. You know if you if you go streaking on the win column, you're really gonna boost up. Um, you know, that's how you get in the top eight. Obviously, if you go streaking the wrong way, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to plummet there. So Packers was a tough, tough team to deal with in the power rankings, but they are, they're down two spots to eight and the team that they lost to the Vikings end up being the biggest riser in the power rings. They're up nine spots. Um, you know, and they got some help with some of the, you know, the Bengals lose, you know, some of these, the Bengals, the Broncos, the Raiders, a lot of those teams losing. And, uh, and I thought the Vikings were much more impressive than teams that also won that were, that were also in their range last week. Uh, Saints, Eagles, uh, you know, teams like that, um, you know, but yeah, very, I expected them to win just because the matchup and the game plan situation, but I did not expect them to win in that fashion. Um, they, they look good on both sides of the ball, which I do think you, you know, I, if you watch that game, you understand like maybe you, it looks like you could, should be able to score a little more than seven points on that defense. I think you can run on that defense, but, uh, they clutched up, made plays both sides of the ball. They looked really good. So they get an impressive win against a good team. They present some things on the field on both sides of the ball. That's what I'm looking for. They're going to go up a whopping nine spots uh, to number seven. Six, the Ravens up three spots. In first glance, you may say, were they that impressive against the Jets, who I now have at 32? Um, and I understand. But if you really think about it, well, I guess the negative is they had the run kind of taken away from them, which is weird. And it's something that I'm definitely monitoring going forward because the Ravens need their run game. So that's something that's interesting. But maybe the Jets got a good run defense. So that's... That's interesting, but they had to find a way to win without the run game, and I like that. You know, that's kind of the Ravens, you know, they kind of had to figure that out in the past, and maybe consistently couldn't. couldn't. They have done it before, um, but, uh, you know, how they did it, how they were able to figure out the passing game, they're getting some downfield action going, they're winning with defense as well, held the Jets to nine points. Um, so I, I liked what they did there. I actually liked what they did. Uh, they definitely need to get the run game going a little bit more. They're going to need J.K. Dobbins back in there, which I don't know if would have been a big difference on um, the way this game was played, but it, it definitely would help. Um, so they're going to go up three spots to number six. Pretty good ranking for the Ravens there. Five, Rams going to go down four spots. Yes, they lose to the Bills, the tough opponent. Very sloppy, though. Very sloppy at the quarterback position. Very sloppy at the in the offensive line. Um, in, in receivers outside Cooper Cup. Uh, defense, I'm not really – you know, I wish they had more of an edge presence, which missing Von Miller could be it, but – uh, and I wish Jalen Ramsey was a little better. He was a little sloppy, but so not the best outing. Um, still a very good team. Uh, put up a good fight in the first half, obviously, uh, but they're going to go down four spots, but still remain in the top five despite losing uh, their game in week one. Four, the Chargers are going to go up three spots here. And, uh, yeah, one, one side of it's like, uh, how, how are the Ravens close in this game? Like, or the, excuse me, the Raiders, how are they close in this game against you? Because you turn, turn them over three times, but... Yeah, you know, some of it was a little late, and they were starting to come back then. You know, not a big deal. The Chargers definitely controlled most of this game. Um, Keenan Allen went down, uh, and they were able to figure out a way. Justin Herbert was able to figure out a way. Defensively, no J.C. Jackson. They are able to figure out a way, probably because of Khalil Mack, three sacks. Joey Bosa, one and a half sacks. You know, things like that. Um, multiple guys getting their hands in the ball. I mean, you get uh, two DBs and a lot, Drew Tranquil, a linebacker, getting his hands in the ball. So, a pretty damn good outing, especially given the circumstances there. So, the Chargers... Coming away with the key uh, rival division win. It's going to help them in the rankings here. Go up three spots to number four. Number three is going to be the Bucks. They're going to go up one spot. Offense was a little disappointing. They were kind of getting beat up on the offensive line. And then Goblin went out again. And they kind of were able to They were able to move the ball. Just need to get touchdowns instead of field goals. But they were kind of able to figure some things out a little later in the game. But the def defensive outing was elite. It was a great defensive outing. It's one of the better defensive football if it's healthy. Uh, they can stop the run. They can blitz. They can get pa pass rush the old-fashioned way. Uh, and the second secondary was so tight in coverage and team secondary play out there. So I love that way they were able to jump the ball. I mean, Dak was fortunate he wasn't picked off more, honestly. Um, so that defense was everywhere. Wish the offense was a little bit better. But they're going to move up one spot. Helped with the Rams loss, so you know somebody and you know somebody was going to lose in the top because the Bills and the Rams were up there, so the Bucks were probably moving up one as long as they won no matter what. Chiefs, Chiefs feel like a number one team, uh, especially because they play what we think is supposed to be a pretty good team in the Cardinals, and they just just pure dominance. They just dominate them both sides of the ball. How about that defense? We're not really talking about that defense. The defense. You know, it's not supposed to be that good. It looked pretty damn good. I like the different disguise looks they're giving, um, mixing in a bunch of different players, 
Uh, you know, that looks good. That looks really good. It's what the Chiefs need. And offensively, uh, Patrick Mahomes and company did their thing. Obviously, they were very efficient. Um, you know, just dominated anywhere they wanted to across the, across the board in this game. So the Chiefs do feel like a number one team. It's just tough to not put the Bills there. You see the top three teams all moved up one spot. Uh, the Bills go up to number one. And, um, yeah, the, we had the Rams there because I felt like they're a very good team and they were defending Super Bowl champs. And I said if the Bills beat them, they're – likely going to be one and they they dominate them at least in the second half they dominate them but the bills show some really good things on both sides of the ball looking like the looking like the team to beat there but the chiefs are right in that conversation it's kind of like a 1a 1b right there so bills are one should not be that much of a surprise there so uh, as you could tell there will be movement in my power rankings they're weekly updated power rankings we're going to treat them as such uh, and now we kind of get going because having good good play uh, in multiple games is key in something like this. Um, you know, you can't be on a streak in one after one game. So we'll see what happens going forward. You know, your team just got to go out there and put out some good football and win games, and they're going to start to go up. And that that's really that's really how it's gonna that's gonna work. So that Rex wraps up the week two power rankings. Uh, we're back every Tuesday with this Tuesday night. We have weekly picks with the boys. Wednesday score predictions and a lot more. So join us, like, subscribe to Novakids on. Make sure you check us out on Twitter and very important links pinned in the comments. Uh, so check that out. Yep, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.